Yeah, yeah, yeah! Come and take a look at the snow. Bright white as far as your eyesight goes. Come and take a look at the fields of snow. I'll just get my coat, then we're good to go. Come and take a look at the lake. Let's have a quick skate before it gets late. Come and take a look at the frozen lake. Put your clothes on, mate. Don't make that mistake. Greetings, holiday shoppers. There are now 137 shopping days left until Christmas, and you know what that means. That means it's time for another episode of Christmas Creeps, your one-stop shop for holiday movies and TV shows all year round. My name is Joseph Wade. I'll be your host for this evening. Here with me tonight is my co-host, Mr. Bradford. Mr. Bradford, what's shaking? It's 137 chomping days left until Christmas. (laughs) That's right. Oh man, like we're gonna have to have so many uh chomping puns tonight because tonight we're discussing the 1982 special Christmas Comes to Pac Land, all about the the Pac Man video game character and all of his family and hangers on therein. Buckle in, boys and girls, and people beyond the binary, because it's gonna be heavy with video game chat. <laughs> Welcome to um, video game chat, the episode. <laughs> so before we get into that. Uh, we had a real, we had a full episode planned for for tonight for you. Yeah, and and by planned we mean we had the title selected, and then we sat down to watch it, and then all hell broke loose. And yes, um, <laughs> because do you... we like to fly by the seat of our pants on this show a lot, as evidenced by the fact that we hardly ever call our shots ahead of time. <laughs> this was one of those times where I called our shot, and again, it came back to bite me because. <laughs> The the film the film in question was a thing that I had found in my local thrift stores like one dollar bin called a Frozen Christmas Part Three, and I said this is surely some you know Z grade children's animation nonsense. We have to and you'd be and you'd be right about that. Yes, however, (laughs) however, um, so so Joe loads this up. And he's like, ah, man, I wonder why I I can find Frozen Christmas 1 and Frozen Christmas 2 on Letterboxd, but I can't find Frozen Christmas 3. (laughs) Um, He shares the YouTube link with me, which uh, is relevant to the story in just a moment. We sit down to watch this thing, and there's like, what, three minutes of exposition? Uh, Roughly, like, you, there are nominally a couple of characters there's a couple of reindeer and santa claus and they talk to each other but it is the jankiest like rap city street kids style animation <laughs> it's it's yeah it's like one notch above rap city street kids it is incredible it, and only because technology has come a little bit farther since then <laughs> Yes, yeah, it was absolutely like the same operating on the same level of technical know-how as Rap City Street Kids was done in like 3D Studio Max back in what, like 2002. Yeah, something like that. Th- this at least they had like access to the Unity Asset Store or something, you know. Like there's some shaders going on at least, but right. beyond that, um so what this is is it's um they start dancing, right? Yeah, like the, the like, can- Santa Claus is talking to the two reindeers and they say like, "Well, you know, boy, that was sure great how we you know, did our Christmas deliveries. Now let's do a dance. <laughs> and they all three proceed to do to dance like in perfect choreography together while like a children's choir sings Christmas songs over them. And And you would think <laughs> and you you thought this this was going to stop. I thought it was gonna be I honestly thought it was a bit. Like I thought it was a joke that like, oh, this is just the dumb thing that happens in kids' cartoons. Like and there was a th- it turns out the jokes on you <laughs> because it it's 71 minutes of nothing <laughs> but that <laughs> yeah you can pan through it uh you can find this on youtube yeah and I, I bring this up because this is very much so the name itself right is already like seo oh yeah perfectly because like people are searching for frozen right right and then frozen christmas comes up oh no, this is like Coco. Me- this is like sub Coco Melon grade. This is something designed to sit as depressing as the thought is. Sit like a, a toddler down in front of to have them blankly stare at it in the middle distance for like 
60 minutes right, right? to give to give mom and dad a break for an hour and then we have like a i i pan through it we got a polar bear dancing <laughs> he's like he's like doing like a hip-hop dance to oh holy night or something right it's it's, <laughs> it's wild man <laughs> but there was there was a moment in this where i thought for a second oh this might be brilliant and then <laughs> <laughs> and then it wrapped back around and no yeah it, like it, that illusion was shattered within like moments because there's a bit in here where the santa claus and the reindeer are talking and santa claus says something along the lines of uh well here's another song to enjoy and then it smash cuts to a completely different santa claus break dancing to a, a different model of a santa different claus. model of santa claus much better than the one that was just talking mind you <laughs> you know what i bet they farmed this out to multiple people maybe so maybe so and that's, that would explain the different styles probably <laughs> there's also one there's one with elves singing and it's it's terrifying like the elves look horrible and then yeah. the lip sync is really bad and then the cover of it like it's 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 a, a, it's beyond the pale it, re um, it really is I'm sorry i'm surprised this made it to dvd honestly i don't understand because it came out in 2018 well into the era when dvds were starting to get phased out you know but also this... the part of the reason that i even considered it was because like the very fact that it's called a frozen christmas 3 made me think there must be some kind of story here and it's going to be fun trying to glean what were the first two were about but seeing this i realized oh it must have just been all dancing all the time it's the elf bowling of Christmas movies. Yeah, it, yeah that's just, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Quick cash grab, kind of in the margins of everything, in the, in the margins of entertainment land, I guess you could say. Right, and so um, they, they just kind of they <laughs> scraping, scraping money off the bottom of the barrel, so to speak. They, they squeeze the dollar out of me from the thrift store and back to the thrift store it shall go. <laughs> Uh, so I, yeah so we got about 10 minutes into this before i realized we had to call an audible and do something drastic because this this could not is this would to not. my knowledge this is the first time we've 86 something usually we're dedicated to we're locked in and what we <laughs> what we're doing is what we're doing right yeah there's only one other instance i can think of where we officially 86 something as we were watching it do you remember what this is was I present for it? I think it was your suggestion, and we had to like pull the ripcord and say no. Did we actually start watching it? We oh yes, I did. Yes, yes, that's right. We um we were watching an episode of Hoarders Buried Alive. Exactly. Where, uh, where the the lady in question hoarded Christmas stuff, and then we like we got into it, and it seemed like a good idea at the time, and then like three to five minutes into it, we we're like. This is just a little too exploitative for our taste. Right. It was just like this. This is this is nothing good can the, come from this. And I yeah. feel like a dirtbag even watching. Well, that's this. that's the TL, that's the TLC experience, my friend. Post <sighs> post 2010 TLC. You're not getting away feeling clean. That's true. Sadly, that's not, true. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to I'm not trying to defend it or anything. I'm just saying that's uh, that's part and parcel. Part and parcel for, right. for TLC's programming block. Any, Anyways, yes, I forgot about that. Anywho, anywho, having done that, we had to call an audible very quickly and decide what we're going to do to replace this. And we landed on Christmas Comes to Packland. Hooray! Hooray for, vi hooray for video games. <laughs> video games save All the day once again. They're always there for us. Right. They will never... Our highest highs, our lowest lows. <laughs> they will never let you down. Much like Santa Claus in a Christmas special, he, it will never let you down. <laughs> uh, so I want to give you a couple of quick facts about Christmas Comes to Packland before we jump straight into it. Please do. So this was broadcast uh, December 16th, 1982 on ABC. Uh some other Christmas specials from the same month, which I think it's neat to see which Christmas specials came out when. Like premiered? Yeah, like like the, like the dates they premiered on TV. So just yes. December of 1982, you could have seen the Ziggy Christmas special. 
Oh, wow. Ziggy's gift. I haven't thought about Ziggy in years. Um, so then you had Ziggy's gift on December 1st. You had the Smurfs Christmas special December 13th. You had Yogi Bear's all-star comedy Christmas caper December 21st. And then uh, much more serious, less funny than all of these. <laughs> December 26th, the day after Christmas, we got the snowman, which of all of those is the one that seems most like actual art. So I'm not going to make fun of uh-huh. it. <laughs> That's the one with the 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 famous song right yes yeah i know the one yeah i i watched it the other night and it it reduced me to a puddle of tears again oh no (sighs) yeah i probably should relive that at some point yeah um maybe this year around christmas time man we were i guess 82 was full-blown smurfs mania at that point right i guess yeah uh see this is going to be an interesting thing because this whole era is just before you're in my yours and my time, our time. Yes. So um, we're really coming at this little, secondhand, basically. Yes. It was also a little bit pre TMNT, if I'm not mistaken. Quite a bit. Quite a bit before TMNT, I think. Um I'm trying to I'm trying to be topical here. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, Ninja Turtles were the show at least came out what? in 87. So yeah, this was at a good five years oh. before that. Wow, I was way off. Okay. <laughs> but also... For some uh, reason, I... See, I don't know much about Turtles, so I, I thought they were, like, 84. Maybe that was, like, the original comic I think or that was. I think that was the original comic, yeah. So you're not, you're not too okay. far off. All right. That, that new Turtles um, movie, though, oh, boy, it sure is good. Okay. I, I might have to check that out. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Anyway... Did go see Barbie, though. What'd you think of that? A++. Highly recommend it. Oh, yeah, it's a good old... a great time. It's a good old time. Uh, as is Oppenheimer, it's just in a different way. Yeah, we, we're we meaning to see that, but we haven't gotten to it yeah. yet. We'll probably just end up streaming that. Uh, you're not wrong. It's it's a it's a long experience, and you, bathroom breaks are encouraged. Um, oh, so it, if 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 Bradford is involved, bathroom breaks are are happening regardless. <laughs> <laughs> if it's more than seventy minutes, we're not getting through it without a bathroom break. Right, like, and that's the trick with the bathroom break in the movies is like you have to decide like is this scene information I need, yes or no, and I have to strike a balance between exposition and action, right? Right, because like I'm getting to the I'm getting to the age where the exposition is more interesting than the action. Yes, so I will dip out. But I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that weird guy that like gets up during the middle of a car chase to go to the bathroom. Oh, I don't but... care. I'll do it. I... I'll get I have no <laughs> scruples about getting up whenever I want during a movie. Good on you. Good on you. <laughs> anyway, it's just cuz I drink too much of the freestyle the giant freestyle sodas. Fair enough. I mean, every time without <laughs> fail. Oh boy, so the Pac-Man TV show. Brad, do you know anything about the Brad, about the the Pac-Man TV show? I know what I read on Wikipedia today, <laughs> this afternoon. <laughs> well, please, would you mind regurgitating some of that for us? I believe it uh, It came out during Pac-Man Fever, or shortly thereafter, Hanna-Barbera joint. Uh, what was it, 82? Yeah, 82 to 83, so it was a very short-lived series. Yes, but apparently it was, it received pretty pretty good ratings to the point where uh a rival station i believe cbs uh did what supercade some as, yeah as as sort of their response to this anyways we were in the height of sort of golden age uh golden age arcade characters i guess you could say mm-hmm. and, and pac-man was was at the forefront of it um what's interesting about this to me is uh, are you familiar with, so the title is Christmas Comes to Pac-Land, right? Right. Are you familiar with the arcade game Pac-Land? I've played it once or twice, but I'm not too familiar with it, no. So it came out in, surprisingly enough, 84, and it was actually modeled after this cartoon. So uh, when okay. when we went into this, I was like, oh, this is based on the Pac-Land arcade game. Do a little research, come to find out. Namco actually made Pac-Land, the arcade game, modeled after the Hanna-Barbera c- cartoon. Wow. Which is really interesting. So we have, like, the first instance of Pac-Man with arms and legs. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, you know, the, the cartoony ghosts that are wearing the hats. Right, right. Uh, that's, all, that's all pulled from the cartoon. But interestingly enough, 
the soundtrack. So there's like a lay motif for Pac-Land, for uh, in Pac-Land okay. when you're playing the game. It shows up in this cartoon special two years before the arcade game. Ooh. And that kind of blew me away. I was like, because I like, because, you know, it's Christmas comes to Pac-Land. I was like, okay, they pulled that. But then in the background music of this Christmas special, it's like the main lay motif of the arcade game. That's really but cool. But it happened completely the other way around that I thought it would have happened. The arcade you know? uses the lay motif like, from, the, from the series. From the cartoon, right? That's awesome. It is very cool. There's um, only one other instance I can think of where this happened. Okay. Where, you know, the X-Men arcade game. Mm-hmm. It is based on a failed pilot for an X-Men cartoon that never got okay. picked up. But they decided just to make an arcade game based on that that art style because it was so unique. And they just, I guess, Marvel was so high on it that, that uh, Konami just produced an X-Men game based on that one pilot episode alone. Yeah, so I, that's the only other time where I can think of where like the 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 cartoon inspired the game. Well, I guess it's okay. not that different, but you know I, what I mean. But we're not talking about licensed games. We're talking about you know some sort of property that existed in some form before this whole cartoon first. Then, right? Hmm, but like this. Me. It, 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 to me it's the same it's it's the same just because like the x-men game like all the character models all of the sa- sights and sounds are ported straight from that one ep- cartoon episode from that one pilot yes gotcha yeah yeah okay yeah i know what you're saying yeah yeah we're not we're not talking about licensed games here but yes where where something some property like this clearly influenced the creation of an arcade work right if you will yes Pac-Land is weird, though. Um, Pac-Land has quite a legacy of its own. It came out in 84 and actually is often quoted as sort of the inspiration for Super Mario Brothers, no less. Um, Because before this, you didn't have, like, platform action sort of going from point A to point B games. And so it was actually pretty novel at the time. Mm. To To the point where the control scheme wasn't codified. Um, if you remember playing it, it actually has, it's a three button game and you have one button for walk forward, one button for walk back and one button for jump. But to run, you'd have to like hammer the, the walk forward button and then hold it. Whoa. Okay. It's a, it's a weird game. I remember playing it when I was little and loving the heck out of it, but it's, uh, it's, 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 it's sort of prehistoric in the conventions of, you know, (laughs) Mario sort of created the the platforming genre, but this is some sort of you know this is like the fossilized dinosaur version of it right before Super Mario Brothers came out. Right, it's like the the Cro Magnon man before Homo Sapien shows up on the scene. Precisely. <laughs> um, really interesting game. Ah, uh, it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah, like try I'm, it out sometime. I'm watching a long play of it, and it does look like kind of difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a strange game. And when they ported it, when they ported it to the NES, they left that control scheme intact, oh my which gosh. is a, a big choice. <laughs> so it does not control like Mario. Uh, it's it's a it's a mood. Oh man! So the one last thing about Pac Man before we get into the special that kind of blows my mind about this is like this special came out in '82. Pac Man had only been out for like two years at this point. You know the the actual <sighs> arcade game. The fever, the fever was hot. The fever was hot. Like Miss Pac Man came out in early '82. Baby Pac Man came out in late '82. And is that the one with the pinball machine inside of it? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever played yeah. that one? Yes. There's a there's a, a a crab restaurant not too far from where I live that has an arcade, and they have a baby Pac Man. Ooh, nice. W- weirdest thing in the world to have it at a crab, re- a seafood restaurant, but they have a baby Pac-Man. <laughs> there, there is an ar- arcade in the shopping mall in North Myrtle Beach that has a baby Pac-Man, and every time I go in there, I have to play it. It's such a, <laughs> just such an odd little thing. <laughs> it's the weirdest. It's very because odd. like ha- like the ha- top half of the game is like the Pac-Man screen, but then like once the the level changes, it jumps straight down to the bottom, which is the pinball machine, and they kind of work in tandem. 
it's i i love old experimental stuff like that yeah like, you don't see that sort of thing anymore they just don't yeah you don't see that kind of innovation anymore it's it's kind of a lost art yes anywho uh, l- listen to us two old farts talking about this stuff <laughs> Farts talking about old video games from before we were even born from before we were born but still still hold a candle for uh, near and dear to our hearts anyway so christmas comes to Packland opens as any good christmas special should with santa and his reindeer on their christmas eve flight and santa is marveling at how his computer list or his christmas list is is computerized it's gonna make everything you know easy for him and then right away i'm struck because the voice of santa claus is a very distinct voice and i know who it is right away who is it's peter cullen who voiced who voices to this day optimus prime (laughs) from transformers <laughs> get out that's uh and you'd think the computer thing would come back up in the plot not a definitely bit. doesn't not a <laughs> single bit <laughs> so it, it is odd to say that uh the star of christmas comes to pack land is also the the main character in a major summer blockbuster from 2023 <laughs> it's oh, just he still does the voice he still does i mean the the Beast Wars movie came out this summer. It's actually not bad. Miss me with that, but I've heard it, I'm I'm happy for people who enjoy that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Santa's flight is interrupted because of a fight that breaks out between Pac-Man and his <laughs> ghost Ghosts. enemies. Uh, the ghosts it's, who have who have incorporated a woman into their gang. Good for them. Uh, yes, Sue. Inky, Inky Blinky. Pinky, Clyde, and Sue. Right. And she shows up in the Pac-Land arcade game as well. Oh, uh, okay. I think she's in Super Pac-Man as well. That's an- Pac-Heads, don't at me. Right. That's a that's another Pac-Man that I, I've never experienced. I know there's a fifth there's a fifth ghost in Pac-Man arrangement. Um have you ever played Pac-Man arrangement? No. Really great no. too. Uh, I'm sorry, it's gonna keep going back to different Pac-Man games, but I mean we're doing the Pac-Man Christmas special. What do you expect? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so Pac-Man is busy building snow ghosts for baby Pac-Man to practice munching on. And there's a lot of crunching and munching going on in this absolutely. episode. Absolutely. And Ms. Pa- Ms. Pac-Man is there. Pepper Pac-Man Pepper uh, is there. Pac-Man. <laughs> so that's that. Here's a fun, another fun factoid for you. You know, the reared rights thing with Ms. Pac-Man, right? Uh, I think I do. Remind me. So basically, some somebody claims to hold the rights to Ms. Pac-Man in the United States. It's I, it's I, it's one of those plug and play. I think it's like at games or something like that. Oh. Got found like a weird loophole to where they're able to claim Ms. Pac-Man within the United States, which is why so many of these collections that come out either don't include Ms. Pac-Man at all, or have to include it as separate DLC mm-hmm. um, because they're not a lot. Namco Bandai Namco is not allowed to package it all together because of the weird rights thing with Ms. Pac-Man, but Jeez. it's always been kind of shaky because, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a ROM hack to begin with that wasn't authorized by Namco. Right. I know that so it was much. always in a, it was always in a legal, weird legal gray area, but with the most recent release of, um, Last year, they Namco released Pac-Man Muse- Museum Plus. They basically have memory hold Ms. Pac-Man and created a new character named Pac-Mom. <laughs> um, and I'm not making this up. You can go look it up. There's Pac-Mom. Uh, but they still haven't released Ms. Pac-Man, which is the best Pac-Man game ever. Absolutely. Everybody agrees. I mean, come on. I was I was lucky enough to have a convenience store in in the college town that I went to that had for whatever reason, you know, you don't run across convenience stores that have arcade games in them too often. For whatever reason, this convenience store that was open 24 hours had a Ms. Pac-Man cabinet, like stuck in one of the aisles between like the Twinkies and the Slim Jims. And it was (laughs) amazing. And I'd go there and play it all the time. It was it was a mood. Um, I miss it dearly. They they tore down the building that the convenience store was in. Uh, yet a, yet another foggy recollection of another time, reflecting yet another time because I don't think you would run across many convenience stores that have arcade games. No, Sheets certainly doesn't age. do that, do they? 
Oh, it'd be so cool if they had like just one arcade game. Come on. <laughs> right? Right. I mean, I, I think it, I, in our, our group chat uh, on Discord, I, I have kind of come out as Mr. Mr. Sheets. So I, I'm like the, the Sheets stand of the group. So I, all I'm saying is like, if we had a Miss Pac Man in there, I'd be there every day. <sighs> all I'm saying. Different age, different time. Yeah, sure was. Anyway, I, I I get why it's not that way because we're pretty much the only people that would play it and and do that sort of thing. Anyways, right. Um, they the ghosts and in, in the packs have a fight, and of in cartoon fashion, uh, the packs trick the ghosts into throwing the power pellets at them. They munch them, and their eyes fly up into the sky. <laughs> as one does in a pac-man game and that's what spooks the reindeer and santa crashes right and he loses the sack of toys in the drink and santa gets recovered by uh pac-man and his kin and the ghost eyes go back to their home and return to the dirty sock drawer where i assume all of the people that the ghosts used to embody were killed and stuffed into Oh, that's morbid. I thought it was just the ghost house because they call the little the the little the tri- the rectangle in the middle the ghost house. Right. But in in the cartoon, it's a literal house. Right. <laughs> but um, apparently in the have you ever seen a, like a normal episode of the cartoon? I have not. No. Okay. Uh, apparently there's some sort of like Gargamel esque figure that controls the ghost, and you see his castle for like a second, but he's not in the Christmas special. Oh, okay. And the, the, he's like the big bad or whatever. Um, See, I didn't know Pac Man had a big bad. Like, I just thought it was the ghosts does, just pounding him all the don't. time. It it doesn't, except for the cartoon. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm sure maybe like the Pac Man World games have some sort of big bad, but I've never played those. Yeah. So who knows? Um, but the interesting thing that happens when Santa crash lands is the packs all discover him, and they're like. Whoa, it's a Martian. It, it, what is this strange creature? Like, they've never seen a human before. Right. And then, of course, Santa Santa's never heard of, of, of the Pax or of Pac-Land. And so, essentially, Santa's been isekai'd into... <laughs> yep, I'm calling it. He's been isekai'd into Pac-Land. You heard it here first. <laughs> hey, I want to ask you a question. Uh, uh, okay. You're familiar with the concept of isekais, right? At this point? Yeah, let's say I am, and I'm not furiously okay. Googling it right now. <laughs> is is a kid in King Arthur's court an isekai? Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, is is a Yankee, what is it, a Yankee in King Arthur's court? A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court. <laughs> it's also an isekai. It's the world's first isekai. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop. Anime is over. I shouldn't talk about this. I'm back. I keep, but anyways, Brad, essentially, Brad, I keep telling you, anime was a mistake. We decided this. It was a mistake. Um, so essentially, the the Pax and Santa have to catch each other up on the fact that each other exists. Uh, the Pax have fallen away from from God's light and sa- salvation. Apparently, well, Pac Man was uh, not made in God's <laughs> image. Clearly, <laughs> he was made in a pizza's image. <laughs> So, so, uh, so that god is Italian. Yes, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, so yeah, they take Santa back home and they warm him up. Santa explains the concept of Christmas to them not very well. It's mostly just <laughs> Santa explaining this is what I do once a year. Okay. Yes. Mean, but that's enough. That's enough. Meanwhile, the ghosts find Santa's toy bag, and. You know, Santa start playing with the toys. They're just playing with the toys. Yeah, and you know, but then they want to they want to chomp Pac Man when he comes to recover it with the dog chomp chomp. Right, because that like their entire motivation is just we just want to chomp Pac Man, and Pac Man just wants to chomp them. Like it's just a vicious cycle. It really, it really is. Okay, we have to talk about how this ends. Okay, so Pac Man distracts the ghosts and is running away from them. Chomp chomp. Gets all the toys and makes a hasty retreat. Chomp Chomp is the, the dog, ghost... by the way. Chomp Chomp is the dog. Is Pac Man's dog, who has also been retconned into Pac Buddy. Oh, thank you. Yes, I don't know why. Maybe they don't want to pay rights to Hanna Barbera. Maybe whoever so. Whoever holds the rights to who holds the rights to Hanna Barbera stuff nowadays, anyways. Oh, that's a great question. 
Would it st- would it be Turner because they have Boomerang? Hanna Barbera. This was Air. I'm, I'm, Hanna Barbera. Hanna Barbera is. Let's see. They are. Little, oh, they were absorbed into Warner Brothers Animation. Oh, uh, okay. Because what we watched was on Internet Archive and was actually a rebroadcast on Boomerang, which I assume is not around anymore. It it might still be, but I don't think it's. I mean, nothing on as, cable is as big as it used to be because of as robust everything as it used to be. Right. Uh, uh, for those of you playing at home, Boomerang was Cartoon Network's Turner Broadcasting's Cartoon Network spinoff where they put all the old cartoons. And it was really good, actually, to just kill some time and watch some old cartoons every once in a while. Yeah, it was great. I mean, they they, they started out with the old Hanna-Barbera stuff, like uh, your Yogi Bears. Yogi Bears, your Tom and Jerry's. Yeah. They did had a lot of Looney Tunes stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, later, much much like Nick at Night, the longer it went, the more recent the shows became. Like, they started yeah. showing, like, Dexter's <sighs> Laboratory and Powerpuff Girls, and uh, that's what made me feel old. <laughs> right Ugh. yeah uh it boomerang is still around as of at least september 2018 so huh. get your boomerang kids <laughs> why why that date specifically um it's I just wonder. the last reported date on wikipedia oh okay as of um, as of september 8 2018 i mean we're just reading wikipedia now boomerang is available to approximately 38 million pay television households in the u.s honestly I will never pay for a cable subscription, but if there's one thing that would make me pay for a cable subscription, Boomerang is up there, which is, I am I realize I'm in the very small minority because it's like one step above those terrestrial television channels that just show old public domain reruns. Oh, I know. Like It's it's like one step above me TV, which is all I really exactly. want. <laughs> exactly like if i could pay if i could pay like the 10 bucks a month for like the three or four channels i wanted on cable i'd be all over just give me boomerang and give me um turner classic movies that's really all i want yeah but what a world yeah in a in a a sane world that's how things would work but the end of this special is is uh uh, coming up soon so let's get to it all right sorry (laughs) it's okay (laughs) Um, I was going to talk about how this this fight ended. Uh, the the in kind of surprising fashion, the ghosts actually catch Pac Man. They do, and they chomp him. They chomp him. They chomp him good. Um, but I guess what happens when Pac Man gets chomped in the cartoon is he he just gets kind of sad. Right. That's kind of all that happens. A little bit weak. A little bit sad. I guess they drain his energy. I don't know. I don't know. It's like the, they don't really they don't really get into it. <laughs> it's like the thing my grandparents used to tell me, which I know this is I know I'm I'm the one who's getting morbid on this show and I'm sorry. But, no. You know, they, my grandparents would always say like, you know, dead people can't hurt you but they can make you hurt yourselves. Ooh, that's a that's a good quote. It's, yeah, and, and so the ghosts, they can chomp pack 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 man. The ghosts, you know, they can chomp pac man all they want, but they're just hurting his pride, really. Um, by the way, I think I think dead people can hurt you. Actually, I don't think I ever mentioned this. Uh, last month, I stayed in a haunted hotel. Ooh. Uh, according to USA Today, the third most haunted hotel in the United States. Thank you very much. Where on earth was this? This was in San in Old Town, San Diego, the oh. Cosmopolitan Restaurant and Hotel. Uh, they haven't operated as a restaurant since that started the pandemic, but it is still a hotel. Let me tell you, didn't encounter any ghosts, uh, but it was home to the world's most uncomfortable bed. My back still hurts from sleeping in the antique bed that they had in the room. Oh, Bradford. (laughs) Um, (laughs) no, it was, I mean, it was certainly a creepy vibe. They had ghost tours going through the lobby every night when i came back which was kind of funny Mm -hmm. um and there was a a a weird splatter on the wall that looked a lot like blood great that was fun that was a lot of fun in my room um and i had there's a journal in every room and the first night that i get there i open up the book and the first page i open to it says 2 a.m is when the ghosts come out and i'm like great (laughs) gonna try to not be awake at 2 a.m 
Mm-hmm. Uh, oh man, no, I, I, I didn't I didn't encounter any any spooks or specters. But also, apparently, I was not in the the most haunted of rooms. I was in the the uh, um the ADA accessible room. So uh, there had been a bit of remodeling going on. But well. anyways. <laughs> I would love it was still it was still a fun experience, but I don't think I'm gonna stay in any hotel with vintage furniture any again anytime soon no it's 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 a novelty, but it's it's also kind of impractical, so I understand that uh I, they weren't very good at making beds in the, the late eighteen hundreds uh, let me tell you I'd rather sleep on a pile of dirt, I guess bed technology has come a long way i I'd love to share uh a similar uh haunted hotel story real quick if, you, if you'll have it please do please do i mean this is we're talking about ghosts we're talking about please. ghosts and this is my show so i can say what i want yes you can last uh year for my birthday nikki took me to um gettysburg yeah not not you know i'm i'm no big civil war buff but i, I enjoy american history as, as much as the next guy and we enjoy going to haunted hotels a lot so she took me to this bed and breakfast called the gaslight inn which was actually lovely and i recommend people stay there but our room had a painting of uh, General Pickett on the wall. Oh, no. I already do not like this. As soon as we check in to the room, we're like, oh, okay, there's that's General Pickett. We get it. It's Civil War, whatever. We go to bed that night, turn the lights out. The street light comes in the window and just shines on his face. And oh, we're both looking at that no. going, nope, not having that. <laughs> Did you? Were there blinds you could close at least? Uh, there were. We, I think we tried to put something in front of the painting so we didn't have to look at it at night. <laughs> Just put a hat over the face of the painting. Because <laughs> I mean, he, they, they were all creepy dudes back then, but this guy was especially like, like it's like they were putting this in the room specifically to try and scare you. <laughs> I think that this was an intentional <laughs> choice. Was this did this hotel bill itself as haunted? It it didn't, but as n- numerous tour guides told us, if any they said if anybody asks whether or not a certain building in Gettysburg is haunted, the answer is always yes. Oh, just right. because fair of enough. like just because of the amount of carnage that went through that city. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But um, uh yeah, Gettysburg's a good time. That hotel was actually lovely and the people that ran it were great. But that room, Te- that painting, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe move the painting. Right. Got it. Cool. Um, I guess we should talk about well, the Christmas special we were talking sure. about. Sure. Huh? Uh, um, so the bag of toys is recovered through some effort, but Santa's like, oh no, it's too late. Uh, yeah, Pac-Man uh, appeals to the ghost's better angels and tries to call a truce for Christmas. Yes, and he somewhat succeeds because they're apparently driving to a special spot in in the car after the what the other pack person and the pack cop, I guess for lack of a better description, repair the sled. Right. Yeah, the denizens um, of Packland. And, yeah, the two the two other denizens of Packland that are are named. Um, and they take this sled and they go to the the power pellet forest, where all of the reindeer eat the power pellets. Hooray! And they're, they're supercharged, they, and they give Santa the speed that he needs to finish his deliveries. So remember, kids, if you need to finish something fast, eat your substances are the key. <laughs> Substance abuse is a uh, key to job productivity. Uh, I I I do uh, know about Pac Man that the the idea of eating power pellets came it was inspired by Popeye eating spinach. Ah, so there's a there's a little bit of like you know a thread going on there, a, a through thread to back to cartoons. Right. There's also the Popeye arcade game. Yeah, yeah, had kind yeah, of yeah. A similar thing going on where you could power up by eating the spinach. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's um, it's it's not out of yeah. nowhere the the power pellets thing. Yes. Um, so, there is, there's still more to this, uh, because the packs get back to their house, and they find a Christmas tree, and presents, and uh-oh, the ghosts are gonna chomp them again. Ugh, oh, man, here we these go guys. again. These guys, they never quit, um, but they give them, pr- the packs give the ghosts presents, and a truce is called for the rest of Christmas. Hooray, and uh, I love- Much, much like World War One, they spend a nice Christmas together, but we'll go back to- trying to destroy one another 
the following day. Of course. Uh, the, the ghosts, they kind of stammer out, you know, oh, we don't know what to say to gifts and presents. And then baby Pac-Man says, how about thank you? Yes. Teaching kids an important lesson. It is good to say thank you. It is you. good to say thank you. That's pretty much the only lesson in this entire special, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Other than your general general small C goodwill to men. Sure, but whatever. Kind of not really, but they really gloss over it and don't really get into it. Also, hey kids, Christmas. play Pac Man. Pa- play Pac Man. <laughs> Buy all our play sets and toys. Boom. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that's Christmas comes to Pac Land. Bradford, what do you make of all this? I I enjoyed it, but that's me being me. Yeah. Um I like Pac-Man a lot. I like I like all of Namco's kind of early to mid 80s arcade output to begin with. So anything adjacent to that I am uh, 110% for. Mm-hmm. I mean I, I I bought Pac-Man Museum Plus for God's sake. Come on, what do you expect? <laughs> Yeah, I I enjoyed this just on the sheer novelty of like it's a, a Pac Man Christmas special and the eighties ness of it all. Like every, like basically every eighties cartoon looked and sounded like this, and the plots were all the same. So like the characters are the only thing that's interchangeable. But the, it was very Hanna Barbera, especially with like the lines and the delivery. Oh too. yeah, like like Pac Man and most of the ghosts all have that kind of. New weird Brooklyn accent. The, yeah, that weird like Brooklyn angry dad accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's very odd. It's man, we'll get him. You know, it's so strange. It's so but weird. It's, it's what a what a choice. It's it's fun though. I I really enjoy it just for the sheer novelty of it. And absolutely, uh, would I play this? Would I put this on at a Christmas party? That's the metric that we always come around to on stocking stuffers. <sighs> Uh, Hell yes, this would make it into a Christmas. Yeah, why not? Are like, you kidding me? Are you? Yes, espe- for sure. Especially like our generation and our age. I feel like if we're gonna put on a Christmas party, it's gonna be an '80s Christmas party. Let's be honest with ourselves. Even though we only were alive for the later half of it and probably don't remember most of it, right? But millennials but still... have that weird misplaced nostalgia for the '80s. Uh, that our pal Jerry D has kind of cornered on uh, totally rad Christmas, but it's we can't escape it. It's I, I early nineties were basically honor you know um, honorary eighties essentially. It was a hangover from the eighties. Yeah, it really truly was, and that was that was our <laughs> the early nineties were our eighties. Damn it. Yes. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, absolutely. This would. And it's it's the kind of Christmas special where it's absolutely like background watching, like turn your brain off, watch it for a couple minutes. You get the you get the complete idea. Right. Oh, they got to save. They got to save Christmas. Santa is not going to be able to make his deliveries on time. Will they save the day? Of course they will. It's an 80s Christmas special. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So and and two, I mean, it. It calls to mind some of the other video game Christmas specials, Christmas specials we've watched, namely Sonic Christmas Blast, where <laughs> the plot of Sonic Saving Christmas is so convoluted it it, it has no reason to exist. But then it, it, with Pac Man, it's just oh, there's Santa Claus. We have to save Christmas. Over and done with. <laughs> there, there's a simplicity to it that I appreciate. Yes, absolutely. So. Uh, two thumbs up here from us at Christmas Creeps for Christmas Comes to Pac Land. Um, maybe we will revisit Pac Man here soon because uh, Home for the Holidays is coming up, and I know there's a Halloween special as well. Oh yeah, so I think we got to do that. We may have to uh... dip back into uh, the Pac Man of it all here soon. That we're gonna wrap things up here at Christmas Creeps. We've kind of gone way too long talking about Pac Man and all things adjacent. But uh, I do want to I do want to point out uh, Frozen Christmas three. We're going to throw the link in the show notes. You have to check this out because it's just like once you see it, you'll understand why we decided not to do it. Scrub through it. So there's um, there's a YouTube video that's it's ancient at this point. It's like 15 years old where the story behind it is uh, there's this guy in an in college for game dev and he takes an animation class and apparently the teacher was just 
not not suited to this class, right? right. And taught them like four things, right? Right. And, a, and for his final thesis, his animation is like this dancing bear, and it's very crudely animated, and he got an A+, plus, and at the very end, it's like just the lowest effort, slapped together in 15 minutes, and it says, <laughs> thanks for nothing, and he gets an A+, plus on it, because he's like, I used every single thing he taught us in the class. That's what that reminds me of for Frozen Christmas 3. <laughs> put that, can you, if you can put the, put the other one in the show notes as well, yeah, the bear. It's called the Colin's Bear, bear Animation. About. I'll put it in there. Colin's Bear Animation. Oh, man. You know what's crazy, uh, too? I, I, I'm looking at the, the thing here. November 29th, 2007, and the bear animation, this may be off the mark, but I'm going to call it now. That bear is like a stock bear model from like uh, some cartoon that came out in 2006 called Open Season, where like it's about a b- is it, bear. <laughs> is it really the bear from Open Season? It's almost season. exactly <laughs> the bear from Open Season. And then it's the music is from, uh, I think the music's from Mother 3. It's like it's just completely ripped assets. <laughs> Awesome. Wonderful. I love it. Uh, uh, but uh, next time on, on uh, Christmas Creeps, we're going to call our shots again. We do have another actual Christmas film. It is the Dog Days of Summer. Where we're trying to bring you a crappy Christmas dog movie. We're going to be watching A Dog Gone Christmas uh, from... Uh, ooh. Uh, when was that? Should have known this by now. A Dog Gone Christmas from 2016. So... Go check that out and come on back and we will talk all about it. Uh, so, <sighs> friends, thank you for listening. We've really enjoyed bringing you this episode. Uh, we are on all the social networks you could possibly imagine. We're on Facebook. We're still on Twitter, but we're also on Blue Sky now. No, 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 no. no. no you're not allowed to call it that anymore. No, you oh. please call it Twitter. Call it Twitter. We're calling it Twitter. It's still Twitter. You know, if we really wanted to be pedantic about it. What? <laughs> when you say Xmas, now you have to call it Twittermas. <laughs> uh, oh, man. We're, yeah, all the socials. X, w- Facebook, w- Blue Sky, are, Threads. Are we on Threads? We are on, on threads. threads. Oh, why would you do that to yourself? <sighs> Co- We're a brand, so I guess it makes Covering sense. the bases, <laughs> you know? And I suppose we're trying to you gotta keep, hedge your bets, trying to keep the brands and the, the SEO up. Like we just today, we got an email from somebody saying that we were listed on uh, their list of like the 35 best Christmas podcasts out there right now. And we're number Spoiler one. Spoiler alert. We're number one, apparently. <laughs> like I'm already like dubious of this. I'm, I'm wary of it's... it. I think this thing was probably written by an AI for sure, right? Probably because like if, if you look at their criteria, they're like, we have a team of experts who vet every podcast for. It's, it's... <laughs> like any team of experts vetting any podcast would put us anywhere near any list. <laughs> I I think we'd be like t- mm, conservative estimate number twenty, maybe. We, we would be maybe we would be one of the Christmas movie podcasts of all time. We we also ran right, um, but like the, 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 the simple fact is like the other thirty four podcasts are none that we've ever heard of. I've never as heard cr- of a single one of them as Christmas podcasters. Yeah, none of our friends, none of our friend, our our, our other podcast Christmas podcast friends are on this list. It's weird. It's so strange. But anyway, we enjoy having. An audience, and we'd like to continue to grow that audience. So please uh, go follow us on the socials. Go uh, leave us a uh, what do you call those? What, what do you call those things where people write words to say how good they think the thing is? A re- leave a review. That's the one. That one. Leave a review. Tell a friend. Uh, yeah, just you know, come join our Discord channel and talk and chat with us about nonsense because that's kind of all we do anymore. We'll put the yes. Discord link in our show notes. Uh, keep trading the tape. Keep trading those tapes friends romans thank you so much for joining us tonight uh i've been joseph wade i'm bradford we will see you down the road for the dog days of summer good night everybody happy christmas happy christmas